Utah's gunky air. Anytime there's a winter inversion, we all experience it. You can see it. It was so bad we couldn't even see the capital. You can taste it. Like as I breathe, I can taste it in like the back of my throat. You can feel it in your lungs. It feels like my lungs are getting smaller for some reason. It's safe to say we're all exhausted by the sickening nature of the air we sometimes breathe. We do have times where we exceed the federal health standards. Especially as more of us share this air. We've seen that a lot of the strategies that we put put in place uh, maybe five, ten years ago, uh, they're starting to flatten out because so many more people are, are coming to the valley. So as a state, are we doing everything we can to improve the quality of our air? All this week, KSL aims to cut through the haze with a focus on solutions, from new technology to better data to small changes that make a big difference. When we look at the combined sources of emissions, of course, we're all responsible a little bit. You know what, right now we're getting a little bit of a break from the inversion thanks to the rain, but once the storms move out, the bad air has the potential to settle right back in. Yeah, when that actually happens, Salt Lake can have some of the worst air in the country here. And that prompted Deanie to start looking at just how other cities are addressing air quality problems, right Deanie? That's right, we surveyed cities across the country and traveled to Phoenix, Arizona and found technology that essentially eats smog. We wanted to know if it might make a, take a bite out of smog here in Utah. The governments all around the world are, are fighting their war on smog. Dutch innovator Dan Rosegaard has built smog towers in some of the world's most polluted cities in China and India. They're like giant air purifiers, pulling in pollution and putting out air that's 55 to 75 percent cleaner than the rest of the city. Oh, and the waste carbon left behind? And carbon, of course, on the high pressure, you get diamonds, yes. So they're also creating trapped carbon engagement rings. That proposal may be too experimental for Utah. But what about this? Cities all over the country are testing what's being called smog-eating pavement. So it's supposed to help combat uh, greenhouse gas emissions. In 2020, Raleigh, North Carolina treated 12 miles of pavement. Then they monitored air samples and found... Roughly between a 28% to 40%, depending on you know where the sample was, uh, reduction in greenhouse gas. So we're really, really pleased with that. They're treating dozens more miles in 2024. The materials, chemicals, and minerals are often added to pavement rejuvenation products. Among them, titanium dioxide, the same stuff in sunscreen. This video from Pavement Technology Inc. shows how when the sun hits the titanium dioxide, it sparks a catalytic reaction. Energized electrons oxidize and break down harmful gases in the air, much like trees. A mile of road uh, is like planting 15 to 20 acres of carbon and nitrogen removing trees. The company has partnered with universities like Texas A&M and Purdue to independently verify similar results in cities like Raleigh, Charleston, Orlando, Cleveland, San Antonio, Tucson, and Phoenix. Here in Phoenix, Arizona, their problem isn't winter inversions, it's summer heat. But they're finding that reflective technology off the roads addresses both. We surpassed our 100th mile installed. Ryan Stevens oversees this project in the nation's fifth largest city. It's a big deal. You know, this past summer we had articles talking about people that slip and fall on the street or for whatever reason getting burns when they're coming into contact with the street. With the reflective treatment that makes the roads gray, not black, they found they could reduce the street surface temperature by up to 12 degrees. They're no longer testing. The city of Phoenix is so impressed, they're spending millions to cool pave neighborhood streets as fast as they can afford. Clean air advocates say this dual purpose would address Utah's winter inversions as well as our increasingly hot summers. So this isn't just a wintertime problem. Correct. We actually have um, a big challenge that we're facing with our summertime air quality as well. We have another interest in the technology. Much of the titanium dioxide that makes these roads reflect the sun is mined here in Utah. So we're cleaning other cities' air? I want to send them a, a bill. It would be, uh, you know, a, a real uh, uh, twist of fate at a place that has such natural beauty as, as, as Utah. 
ends up being the the kind of the savior. For all the connections and seeming applications here in Utah, you might wonder, why are we not testing it here? Well, it was tested here for a short time years ago at the University of Utah. Uh, it was called smog eating concrete. This expert in concrete is now at Utah Valley University. We did prove that the, the product uh, that we were using was effective. The biggest downside we saw is it seemed to only work in a climate that was humid. Our arid climate had a drying effect on funding and research. We took our question to the head of Utah's Division of Environmental Quality. He says the state would rather invest in things they know work. That's really what we're looking for is these uh, big wins where you get a large reduction in emissions with very little cost to the consumer. In the city of Raleigh, they say the cost of adding titanium to their road conditioner is nominal, about a dollar per square yard. In Phoenix, it doubles the cost of their road product, but they say it's an investment they're willing to make. That reduction in surface temperature, we believe, will help make our city more sustainable and more livable. While researching the story, I also learned the same technology extends to roofing shingles. And right now, Artistic Roofing in Ogden is using tech-treated shingles on projects like this at the University of Utah campus.